Video 86 was closed with a promise to reveal how a Jehovah's Witness proved me wrong and how I was stunned by him. Well, I began preparing the script for this video, choosing to begin by showing the clip from video 79 where I said something wrong, then reveal how he corrected me. When I replayed the video in question, video 79, looking for the part where I was wrong, guess what? I have to retract my plans to do a retraction because I was not wrong after all. Here's the situation. I discussed the watchtower teaching of the governing body acting as substitutes for Jesus. I went on to discuss the choice of the word substituting, indicating that the watchtower Bible is the only modern translation that inserted that word and that the governing body puts itself forward as substitutes for Christ. Now this could be a bit confusing, so I will make it as clear as possible. The reason I conceded to being wrong is that I did imply, note the word, imply, that the word substituting could not be used at all. A Jehovah's Witness impressively pointed out to me that the word could actually apply, and that is where he proved me wrong. So I came back to the video to retract the statement, only to find I did not explicitly say the word could not be used. So I could not find an actual statement in the video to retract. What was said in the video is that the Watchtower Bible is the only modern translation that used the word, which he conceded to be true. There is a particular song I love to sing, a song I sang a few times at church. The refrain says, You're the only Jesus some will ever see. You're the only words of life some will ever read. So let them see in you. The one in whom, is all they'll ever need. Cause you're the only Jesus, some will ever see. In the context where Jesus is not here, and people see him in us, it could be said that we are substitutes for Christ. Fine. But I urge you to look again at videos 79 and 80 for the reasons I stand by the content of those videos. Basically, whereas the rest of us Christians see ourselves, all of us, as having a role to represent Christ, the watchtower position is that the faithful and discreet slave is the substitute for Jesus, the ambassadors, while the so-called other sheep are only envoys, assisting the ambassadors in their ambassadorial work. Yes, he did mention some quotes that suggest that all the anointed are substitutes but that only represents a contradiction of the position I just stated. I was particularly impressed though with how he developed his arguments, however flawed. But this is where he left me stunned. How can someone so intelligent, so clinical in his thinking, such a critical, clear thinking person not see the obvious flaws in Watchtower theology? Among other things, he said, The quote in the video is from a 2010 watchtower. At the time, all, whom we call anointed Christians, were defined as the faithful and discreet slave. That is no longer the understanding. Because of the responsibility of dispensing spiritual food, according to Matthew 24 45-47, we now view the governing body as the one mentioned as the faithful and discreet slave. I am first stunned that someone like him could read Matthew 24, 45 to 47 and see that as a prophecy about a slave that will be responsible for dispensing spiritual food to all followers of Jesus. That's a topic for another day. He is making out that I am being disingenuous because at the time the statement in question was published, it was all the anointed and not the governing body who were considered the faithful and discreet slave, and that now they see the governing body as that slave because of the role of dispensing spiritual food. I am stunned that he has not seen that even then the statement was speaking specifically to the governing body. Here is the statement. 
pay attention. A few anointed members of the Israel of God still remain, and as Jesus' brothers, they continue to act as ambassadors, substituting for Christ. They have been appointed as a faithful and discreet slave class. Printed in 2010, when the governing body was not yet defined as the faithful and discreet slave, who were these few anointed members the article spoke about? It continued, They have been appointed as a faithful and discreet slave class to care for and provide spiritual food for anointed ones and a growing crowd of Christians. Who else was doing that in 2010 but the governing body? If you saw the way the gentleman developed his arguments, you would see clearly that he is a critical thinker. I am therefore stunned that he does not see the confusion in Watchtower teachings. At that time, the faithful and discreet slave was defined as all the anointed, while declaring the slave to be doing something that all the so-called anointed were not doing. Didn't he pick up on that? There is so much that he missed. This would be a pretty lengthy video if I commented on them all. We have been in conversation and he kept saying things with grave implications while totally missing those implications. Following this video, I will be starting a four-part series on how to witness to Jehovah's Witnesses. In the last three of that series, I will discuss some clear false teachings and errors, even lies, that this gentleman seemed to have missed, and I am stunned that he missed them. Before I go, let me give you two final examples of things someone so intelligent and well-reasoned should never have missed, and that he did miss them is nothing less than stunning to me. In developing an argument, he used two watchtower quotes. Nor would we have our writings reverenced or regarded as infallible, or on a par with the Holy Scriptures. The most we claim, or have ever claimed for our teachings, is that they are what, we believe, to be the interpretations of the Divine Word, in harmony with the Spirit of the Truth. And we still urge, as in the past, that each reader study the subjects we present, in the light of the scriptures, proving all things by the scriptures, accepting what they see to be thus approved, and rejecting all else. How could he not have picked up on the blatant lie that that statement is, or, at best, that the organization has moved away from that 1896 position? Approved association with Jehovah's Witnesses requires accepting the entire range of the true teachings of the Bible, including those scriptural beliefs that are unique to Jehovah's Witnesses. That statement says, they must accept the true teachings. Does that assume that there are also some false teachings? No. The position is that all their teachings are true, and to be a Jehovah's Witness, one must accept all their teachings or risk being disfellowshipped. There is no allowance for any Jehovah's Witness to reject any Watchtower teaching and remain a member in good standing. Here's another quote cited by this stunning Jehovah's Witness. I have two responses to this one. We do not object to changing our opinions on any subject, or discarding former applications of prophecy, or any other scripture, when we see a good reason for the change, in fact, it is important that we should be willing to unlearn errors, and mere traditions, as to learn truth. First, when will it dawn on a Jehovah's Witness, with a clear analytical mind, that the Watchtower has virtually admitted that they, as Jehovah's Witnesses, have been following the opinions of their leaders and not the direction of the Holy Spirit. That is the reason their doctrines change so rapidly. Secondly, the statement speaks to unlearning errors. Does he know the Watchtower's position on the source of errors? All error and lies are of the devil, 
and are certainly a great reproach and dishonor to God. In one of our conversations, he wrote an essay on the subject of being spirit-directed, arguing basically that being spirit-directed does not immune one from errors. Well, I hope that if he never got it before, he certainly will get it now, because he is intelligent enough and analytical enough in his thinking, certainly, to understand that all errors they have been unlearning over the many decades came from the devil and not the Holy Spirit. And this is what the organization has to say on the matter. Consequently, Jehovah is against all such pious frauds that teach lies in his name, and he will clean them out at Armageddon. Could that statement ever be applied to Jehovah's Witnesses? All Christian churches are teaching and preaching in the mighty name of Jesus our Lord. Only Jehovah's Witnesses are preaching in Jehovah's name. In the upcoming series, I shall be discussing some undeniable lies that Jehovah's Witnesses have told and are still telling in Jehovah's name. Mr. Analytical Thinker, please put on your analytical thinking cap and please think. These are not my words. Jehovah is against all such pious frauds that teach lies in his name and he will clean them out at Armageddon. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.